Hey everyone, welcome to another Maya tutorial. On this one, I'm going to focus on the attribute editor and the Maya toolkit. It's uh, some of these buttons up here in the top. I didn't realize I didn't show any of these on my last tutorial, so let's go over some of them. Uh, first, we have the attribute editor. Well, it's the channel box here. And within that, we have layer editor and things like that. Uh, some examples of what you might use this for. So if I actually showed this in the last tutorial too. See how when I'm scaling this object, we have over here in the attribute editor, those numbers are changing as well. Same with if I move the object. So this will work out like if you wanna, if you're building something for a game or something and you wanna maintain a very solid unit size, location size and things like that, you can modify all these attributes up here. A good tip for this is, say you wanted to get this close to this base right here, Move it as close as you can, and then just from there, you can just modify this. So maybe it's 1.5. This one's probably 4 and 2. And there we go. See, now it's lined up pretty nicely. But yeah, so there's, or if you want to return it to its original center location from the pivot point right in the center there. And this is referred to the pivot point, if you didn't know. That's basically, if you were to rotate this object, it will rotate from that pivot point. Okay, let's get into the another one of these here. So, tool settings, if you hit this button here, it'll bring up your tool settings. And some useful things for that, a good example of that would be the move tool. So it's just sliding, and it's moving, just sliding uh, between the numbers. It's not like jumping or anything. Say you wanted to snap this to a specific amount, you could, right here, you can turn on snap relative, and now it will snap one block at a time. Notice the move, the numbers up here are going one at a time, nice and clean. So that's another way to kind of keep your modeling organized. Say you always wanted a wall to be a certain thickness. You would have to go and set all of these up like that though. You go to step snap relative and now should, there we go. Now it's, it's snapping and scale as well. Same with rotation. Rotation is very useful because in rotation, notice how it's nicely rotating and i mentioned this last time too you can hold the j key and it'll snap between having step snap turned on and off okay let's go to the next one here so attribute editor this you might use you can do some changing of scale and stuff for the specific ones in here and that's going to translate over to this this one i'm not going to get into too much i honestly don't go in here that often unless I'm dealing with materials. So we're just going to show that that is here. This is just basically showing, you know, the materials and stuff that's on here, but let's not worry about materials yet. So let's go to the next one. And this one, I'm going to close the uh, tool settings. This one's super useful. This is the uh, Maya uh, toolkit. And there's a lot of great things in here. Let me return this to its original four inch, four by four size, not inch. Okay, so some of the really cool tools in here, I'll run through them. Some of them are up here in your modeling bar already. But say say we wanted to combine an object, which you can do up here, but say we had two of these objects, and I'm going to make two of them by just duplicating with Control D. I'm going to slide that over one. Um, using this toolkit here, we can just click both of them, holding Shift, and I'm clicking one, then the next, and hit Combine. And there, we have a nice singular object. Now even when I rotate this, everything will go together. But these are one, well, they're considered one object now. Say I wanted to separate them, you could just hit that button. And now they're separated. One note on that is when you do separate an object, the pivot point will always assign to the center of the grid, which is right there. Since this point object is already on the center of the grid, that's perfectly centered in the object. Later I'll show how to change pivot points and stuff. Let's go on to then some other tools in here. We have the smooth, smooth. So I basically took this and added smooth ed edges to it. And now you'll notice it's a lot. It also adds like a smooth uh, surfaces to that. Let's undo that. And then let's do a Boolean. So let's duplicate this object again. In a Boolean, you basically can use it to cut the shape out of another object. So let's click that. Let's click these two hit boolean and now it's going to ask us what type of boolean we want to create uh, union so intersection union and difference union is basically combining them together 
differences is subtracting the difference between the two. An intersection, it's keeping whatever intersects between those objects. And I actually use the most, I would say I always use difference a lot. So I use that to cut doorways out and things like that. And here we made kind of a stair step, stair step situation. So there's lots of uses for the Boolean. And you can find these tools up in these other areas, but the toolkit kind of combines all the tools in a nice single area. Okay, let's undo that. Let's delete that. Let's go on to the next. We're going to go into the components uh, area. And another note thing you can note up here is we have a selection thing. I probably should have showed this first. You know how I can right click and go to face and select faces and things like that. And then object modes, this one right here. Say we wanted to jump through all of those using this. We can click here and it goes to our verts. Here goes to our edges for selections. Here's our faces. And then here's like a UV selection, but right now we're not gonna get into the UVs. Also, if you hit multi-select, it'll give you the option to do selections of all those different types at the same time. So you can select edges, verts, and faces all at once. I normally just do singular selections. Okay, now that we have that, let's ju jump back to components. And actually, maybe we'll have that in part two. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep this kind of the focus for now. We'll do mesh components. We'll break it up into smaller segments. It's a lot to start taking in. And um, I, I'll show a little bit more things you can do with uh, these things right here. So say we wanted to Boolean some other objects. Let's take this circle object. This is a fun one to cut out. It's a little more advanced. Let's place it right here and then click on Boolean. And let's do a, this is actually something to notice here. See, we did the difference and then kind of cut it out that way. I actually want the reverse of that. So um, we're going to go back and this is actually dependent on what you select. So if you select this and then this, and now hit Boolean and go through and go to difference. Now it cut it out that way. There's also different, uh, classifications, but we're going to leave those just set to normal for now. And if you do intersection, I'll change like this. Booleans always took me a little while to kind of get used to, but sort of playing around with them and going back and forth is always a great way to learn with these. And okay, let's do a smooth on something that already is smooth. That just basically took the object and it doubled the amount of polygons. And remember, a polygon is a four-sided shape. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, too, is that when you do these extractions and stuff, if you're planning on bringing this stuff into a program or something, let's do another Boolean here. Actually, I want to do it reversed. I'll select this one and then this one, so we'll cut those out. We'll do a difference. So one thing you want to keep in mind is if you do a Boolean like this and you expect to bring this into a 3D modeling program, it's not going to work because when you look at this, these faces, they're more than four sides. And you always have to have four sides for a polygon, three for a triangle. So in this case, you'd actually have to add all those extra tri triangles or polygons to bring it in. Otherwise, there's these verts don't have, they're not making a complete polygon. They don't lead to anywhere. So say this, this one went over to here, then that would create this into a triangle. So we could use that multi cut tool, which I can show you later. But yeah, so there's another little bit of Maya stuff you can kind of start to play around with. And just to remember those, we've got combine, which brings two objects together and combine. And if you want to break those apart, you can just hit separate. Now they're separated. And then the smooth, there we go. And also on the smooth, when you hit that, you can actually click divisions. And one thing to note, like this, this is a little bit different than a sphere. See how it has a little bit of, you can kind of see the origins of the square in here, but it does look smooth. But yeah, let's call that an episode for now and we'll come back and go over some more stuff 
Next time we'll talk about extrude, bevel, bridge, and divisions. Okay, have a great day, evening, whatever. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, just comment below. And if you liked it, like and subscribe. And look forward to seeing you next time.